GM have been dormant for a while, but now they really have woken up. Very recently, you saw a story on the Chevrolet Cruze from us, and that's due in India soon. But today, we're talking of a car that's just around the corner. And finally, it's a true blue Chevy. Just take a look at its double XL sized American proportions to know what I'm talking about. Yes, this is the Trailblazer. It's all set for launch this October, but it comes into a segment where there's the already capable Toyota Fortuner and Ford Endeavor, and they're both due for a makeover soon. So this really has its work cut out for it. Can it do it is what we've got to find out. Well, it certainly has the beef as they say. I feel instantly dwarfed in front of the Trailblazer and I know I'm going to have to haul myself in. It stands tall at 1.9 meters and its 4.8 meter length makes it larger than the Fortuner, which has always felt huge. So it's got the size, but it's also got the attitude. A heavily sculpted bonnet, a large front dual grille split by the panel that houses the Chevy bow tie, and skid plates give it muscle. But the flash that Indians like is missing, with chrome only to line the grille and the fogs. Around the sides, its massive proportions are evident, but the surface is a bit cleaner than most SUVs. There's no cladding around the fenders and only a deep slash at the bottom of the doors. Although the chunky Duramax emblem and the large gap between the tyres and the body lets you know that this is still very much a tough SUV. It sits at a class leading 241mm off the ground, ensuring that it will go over almost anything. The body widens towards the rear, giving it still more weight, and the wraparound rear windscreen that merges with the quarter glass is very much like the Fortuner. The tail is, well, just that, a tailgate, quite simple, and the spare wheel is mounted under the car. It is an imposing vehicle and if you're looking for something to make you feel like the king of the road, the Trailblazer does it well. Once you haul yourself inside the cabin, it's quite a pleasant surprise. It's a simple layout, but it's nice and neat. You've got this glossy piano black finish on the central console and what I like is the rotary layout for all the volume and AC controls. There's a nice chunky knob for the temperature control. Of course, you've got the touchscreen infotainment system. The dials are a bit small and you feel like you're looking at them through a ski mask because of the way the binnacle is shaped. It's very much like the Camaro with the blue and black light as well. The vertically oriented air vents work well to cool the car and there are vents for all three rows too. The seats are well cushioned and comfortable and the chunky steering makes you feel like you're driving a mammoth. The dual tone colouring works well and the interior has a lot of practical bits too. There are a lot of handy storage areas, one over here, one under the steering wheel to put your wallet. There's a dual glove box as well over here. So handy storage spaces, there's cup holders, I'll show you the one on your side. So neat little touches on this interior. In terms of features, the high-spec Trailblazer LTZ, the sole variant to go on sale in India, offers quite a bit. In addition to the touchscreen, reverse camera and leather seats already mentioned, it gets cruise control, projector headlights, powered mirror and electric adjust for the driver's seat. A sunroof and onboard sat-nav would have been welcome too, but for the moment, you will get a phone-linked version. Cars for India are to come with cabins finished in black and beige materials. What it also gets is the ever-popular third row. Well, we're going to be talking about this middle row a little later in the story, but for now, let's see what the third row is like. As you can see, it's really easy to flip this seat up. So, lots of space for us to get into the third row. Let me put it up for myself and see what leg room is like in this third row. I must say, not bad at all. Um, I think it's enough for an adult to be in for a while. Not the most comfortable of places to be, but it's less knees up than the others are and manageable. The headroom is tight and the seats don't recline, so you sit quite upright. So when I say manageable, I mean that it's good for short runs unless you're really short. However, if there is no one in the third row, then you can open up a lot of luggage room. With the seats fully up, you can only fit in a few soft bags, but a combination of splits and folds allows you to make enough room to move your house. Now, to do that, you'd need a strong engine as well to carry the weight. And the Trailblazer definitely serves that up. It houses a strong 2.8 litre Duramax under the hood that serves up 197 bhp. But the number to make you smile is really the torque figure. This engine serves up 
50 kgm of torque and you can feel that out on the road because put your foot down and it's ever ready to serve up power and it makes this huge massive car feel lighter than it actually is. The best part is that the torque comes in at a low 2000 rpm and just to put it into perspective the Fortuner only makes 35 kgm at 1400 rpm. It's not a quiet motor but when you put it in the face of the competition it does feel the most refined. You can hear the roar of the fan but it's nothing that you can't live with. What works really well with this engine is the six-speed gearbox because it's quick to shift gears whether it's up or down when it's in auto mode but switch it into manual and it gets even quicker and the best part is it feels absolutely like a manual because it holds the gear till you shift up. It makes quick overtakes and off-road maneuvers that much easier. Speaking of off-road while scouting for the perfect location for the team to get the static shots of the car, we had to trundle down a narrow broken country road. And whilst doing that and arriving at the lakeside, we got a good chance to test the Trailblazer suspension and its ability to tackle the rough stuff. The lakeside wasn't hardcore off-road, but it still showed us that the Trailblazer could pretty much go over anything. Unfortunately for those that are thinking of this as a good mud thinger, you must know that the Trailblazer will only come in a 4x2 version. However, it still feels quite capable. There's enough wheel articulation and you can trundle over hillocks and large rocks easily. If it gets more slippery, the good low-end torque is enough to pull you out. So for a spot of weekend adventure, the Trailblazer will do just fine. When you're on the go, the steering feels nice and light and easy and convenient to use. So, it really doesn't feel like a big, massive car. But, when you do have to make a U-turn and you're in the city or you're parking, you will feel the weight of that steering. Getting back to civilization over the broken bits of road, I decided to get a feel of what it would be like to be a passenger. Now the ride quality, well, as long as you're at low speeds or on a smooth section of road, it's fine. On a bad section of road, you can get tossed around a fair bit. It is a body-on-frame construction meant to take a good beating and though it pummels through the road and keeps you well isolated when you are at slow speeds, it does get unsettled as you pick up the pace. The effect on the back seat is more amplified. Still, the suspension works so silently that even over the worst of roads, it masks the quality of the ride. It's a nice, spacious, comfortable back seat that will seat three abreast very, very easily. And though the swab is a bit short, there's enough room to sort of stretch your legs out so it still feels extremely comfortable. A point to note is that the back seat is not adjustable but the recline angle is good enough to keep you happy on long journeys. The spacious back seat is a comfortable place to be. Well, like I said in the beginning, this SUV is XXL and everything about it is. The proportions, its weight, it's a two-tonner, it's spacious on the inside, the engine is the most powerful one of the lot and it feels nice and punchy and strong. It's a comfortable car, the ride is a bit bumpy but I'll tell you what, when you're behind the wheel of this car, it gives you this commanding, all-conquering feeling that's even better than the Fortuner and that's saying something. Of course, it can't always be all positive, there is a catch. This is not a 4x4, unfortunately it's only going to come in a 2x4 and of course even the price is XXL. Since it's going to be a complete import, we expect it to be around the 30 lakh mark. But GM wanted to make a statement with the Trailblazer and that they've definitely managed to do.